Hello community. Hello community. This is the May 22 update video. It's been a year since we did the last video and uh, we've started shipping the first 400 Mega 65s which already arrived at their new proud owners. Uh, as a reminder, the Mega 65 project is an open source community driven project which means everybody is invited to contribute and to enhance the computer with us. The development is ongoing. So, as you can see, this is not Anton, this is Oliver, also known as Ludon, and he has become part of the core team. The core team are a few guys that um, try to fulfill uh, our, all our dream to build the best 8-bit computer that ever existed mm -hmm. based on the C65 platform, which was abandoned by Commodore 30 years ago. So... Oliver has uh, been participating for the last six months and he's learning VHDL. He will be porting other cores using the Mr. to Mega framework. And uh, due to his engagement, he's now part of the core team. So, yep. welcome, Oliver. Yeah, hello. <laughs> uh, you probably have seen some videos he made uh, about the C64 core, for example. Or other stuff he's been live streaming um, so we want to talk about the objective the community engagement a little bit today what's uh, to be expected and what's done what's not um, what yeah we, we were a bit uh, um, overwhelmed by the um, yeah, mass of requests and uh, bugs and features and uh, I think we need to um, Channelize uh, all this information into a um, yeah good place so that the developers can work and uh, do not have to uh, spend their time uh, managing messages essentially. So and this is uh, why we uh, would like you to report your bugs or your feature requests mainly via the GitHub issues functionality so that we have a yeah centralized place. So, but again, we invite you to do the stuff you are looking for yourself because the Mega 65 platform is open and uh, as you know, it has a very uh, strong, very powerful FPGA inside. So everything is still in movement and everything can be changed, enhanced and uh, um, it's not a consumer machine. It's, it's uh, built to be developed on and developed with developed yeah. for <laughs> and um, uh, even hardware problems can be somehow alleviated as we have um, seen the RTC problem which did hit some of the production machines um, we had no uh, idea that this would happen and only a few of the um, um, uh, RTCs are uh, affected but uh, Paul is already working um, on a workaround. This could either be uh, in hardware, in FPGA. This could also be an uh, extra RTC clock connected to the special groove connector that is on the board. Um, and uh, it is really important to understand the RTC is only there to save the time between reboots. So um, it can... Um, uh, you, you also have the CIA and you have the Jiffy clock. This is still inside the machine and this still works. So there is no real problem if the time is not saved between reboots, except that the time is not saved. Yeah, you already said it. Uh, there were some problems reported with the RTCs, the, the real-time clocks. Um, so this is basically due to the uh, current crisis. We call it Chippergeddon. And uh, we did manage to source from several sources all the compo components we needed. We were able, with uh, some delay, to ship the machine uh, even in this problematic times. But unfortunately, uh, a small number of uh, real-time clocks seems to be defect. We are not 100% sure yet. Maybe we can get them ticking. Um, we will definitely take care of this. And again, we is the core team with the community. It's very important to understand that uh, we are not making money from this. This is uh, all is community effort. 
uh, if we need funds to, for example, replace the real-time clocks uh, via the growth connector, this is also money coming from the community. So please understand, it, it is not a consumer product. If something is in the first batch problematic, uh, you think it's broken, please talk to the community and please understand that if you demand things to be replaced, stuff like that, this is also money that's coming from the community and this money won't be used uh, to enhance the machine. Um, so it's your decision. Uh, it's very important to understand that this is not, we are not a co commercial company. Nobody's making money from that. Trends is not making any money from that. Trends is considered a team member, uh, basically because Anti, the chief developer, has uh, put a lot of work into uh, the making the PCB, designing it. Uh, he also did this uh, in his free time. So um, yeah, keep in mind, it's all a community effort. Uh, but it's important to say, I think, that we are, um, we are living that open source spirit and we are giving back quite a lot of things. For example, um, the HyperRAM controller, which is now near perfect, this didn't exist uh, as uh, open source before, so other projects uh, get earned from, uh, from, from what we are doing. Also, the SIDs are near com uh, completion and will be probably soon the best uh, open source VHDL SIDs on the market. Um, there's more stuff we are doing. The, the SD card controller is being rewritten and uh, will also be available as open source for everybody else. So, um, yeah, th I yeah, think this, 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 uh, this uh, happens as part of the Mr. To Mega 65 project. Exactly. And uh, also from this place, uh, lots of uh, enhancements come and also go into the Mega 65 core. Um, it's a, it's a, um, yeah, um, a good synergy between the projects and um, it helps to make the machine better. So to wrap it up, um, it's community driven. There is a core team that does the management. Um, there, it, this team consists of the people that engage the most. You can become part of the core team. Oliver is now for six months, he's working with us and, and uh, now he's part of the core team. Anybody can do, can become part of the core team if he can do coding, management, whatever, community work, just uh, talk to us. And, uh, but we still need everybody else from the community to contribute and to, to participate. And uh, so, yeah, if possible, don't demand things, but talk to the community, to go to Discord, talk to the other people. Most things can be solved there. And if there's really a problem, I mean, we had, we had one machine that was delivered which had two <laughs> cursor left keys instead, uh, one left, one right. So this stuff will be replaced. We have one manual that was... Uh, Find uh, it on the wrong side. Yes, yeah, so this will be replaced. But please understand, it's not coming from, uh, like in a commercial company, we have like 200% overhead where we can take the funds out. If this is all community money. Somebody will give us money to replace those things. Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a very good uh, and future-driven approach. Uh, th th we believe things should be like that. It yeah. all so should be open source, all should come from the community, but it of course uh, needs some change of mind for some people, let's put it like this. Yeah, yeah right. So talking about the future of the Mega 65, Oliver. The future? Yeah, what's, um, what's the future of the Mega 65? I think yeah. we can say development is ongoing. Development is before. ongoing and um, we have a core team, um, as we already told you, that is working on um, the development of the various parts, the core, the ROM and uh, all the little um, additional things we need. and. Um, um, we will uh, use uh, GitHub and the issues to uh, prioritize certain problems or feature requests um, so that the uh, uh, most important ones get done first. Um, and if you want to help, you can do that. You can um, fork the repositories, the one you want to change something in. Uh, I also did this with the QOp codes uh, in, back in this uh, November last year. 
and um, then you can work on your own fixes or own features and if the result is great uh, you can change uh, show this to the community and if uh, we like it it uh, goes back into the core on and if you want to do something different and uh, make your own core for the mega 65 you can actually take the mister to mega 65 framework as a clean slate um, io um, interface to the mega 65 hardware and develop your own um, core for the system so uh, it, it's probably um, good to say that it's very easy to update the system you don't need that uh, jtag adapter um, maybe on a side note, we are now doing stuff with uh, FTDI anyway, so because the JTAG interfaces are not available uh, due to chip and um, <laughs> But the machine can flash itself, you can easily replace the ROM and update it. We know there are people that have problems with the constant updates. They say, oh my goodness, things are, it, it, it's a moving target, the ROM is changing, I cannot program anything because uh, it won't run tomorrow. I think that's not true because we are doing reverse uh, testing. We, we are testing for uh, backwards compatibility. And uh, of, of course, sometimes things break, but to be honest, when I built that uh, community disk, uh, we had uh, exactly that problem because like, uh, oh, it's not booting, maybe you can get it to run. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, uh, there were like five, five or six uh, programs that uh, did not immediately run uh, because it were, they were developed over one year and in that period we had a lot of changes um, but it was for all uh, just addressed the coders and they f fixed their games their demos and it was mostly one line of code to fix them and they just updated it on, on file so in my opinion, it's not an issue and we, we are doing very well with the backward compatibility. There are a few guys that want a C65, they don't want a Mega 65. This is also possible. You can take uh, an old ROM and you will get 3.5 instead of 40 megahertz, and everything will be very much compatible to the C65. It could, of course, be another group or stream that even uh, uh, works only on making the perfect C65 without the new features. But that's, of course, not our focus. We want to, to make the, get the best out of the machine, want to have everything uh, like a, a modern reimagination, making the best 8-bit computer that's available on the market. Uh, so that's not in, in the focus of the core team. But again, everybody can do anything. It's... Uh, uh, and it's open all open. Yeah, it's, it's all <laughs> open. You can get the whole code. And even uh, if you now say, oh, the ROM is not open, the ROM has certain licensing uh, attached to it. So uh, just talk to us. You can get access to the ROM if you are a Mega 65 owner. Yeah, exactly. If you are the owner, you have a license, you will get access yes. to the source code. You can change it. The uh, bit shifter has coded uh, its own assembler, which is compatible to the one. Uh, that Commodore used 30 years ago, so you can easily assemble the ROMs, you can immediately test uh, your changes, you can put 10 different ROMs on the card and boot to the different versions by just holding the number keys during boot. Everything is possible. So what, what we basically did so far is it give you all the possibilities, but of course not everything is, is finished. For example, the freezer still has a lot of bugs and um, in a commercial world, we would have decided against delivering it, but we also see uh, that our decision to even deliver it in a better version with a lot of problems, but also a, a lot of things working, that for example, RetroComps, he, he uses the freezer constantly to, yeah. to have shortcuts, auto-mounting the disk, etc. And it works. <laughs> and uh, I mean... It, what do you want? We want it to be there, even if it's unfinished, and because you always, we have so many options to do anything, you can always work around every bug. Uh, BitShifter's ROM is so complete, you can mount without problems the internal drive, uh, external drives, a copy from SD card to, to real drive, and vice versa. You can copy stuff from the internal drive to your 1581 drive, um, etc. So, uh, I think the approach to have everything working at least partially is at least for us and our thinking better than not giving you the features like a commercial product uh, would do. 
So. Oh, you're, you're putting uh, hibernated. Yeah. Hibernated, hibernated from yes. the disc. So, um, yeah, since it's been one year uh, since the last update video, I think we talked about it, but not in an update video. So this is the first commercial physical release on disc. It's a text adventure in Infocom style. It has the great packaging, which is very much Infocom-like. And, uh, and lot, uh, lots of nifty stuff like goodies, patches yes. and uh, a poster and something and uh, yeah and, stickers. And Stefan Funk said uh, it's uh, selling very well and uh, I think uh, that's a good start. That commercial software is coming out for the Mega 64. Isn't there uh, even a, another release? Uh, yeah, there will be Hibernated 2. Oh, yes. Um, cool. Uh, I think there are also some other commercial uh, games planned already, but uh, yeah, no, no further information at this point in time. The community mm. is very active. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see so on Twitter, uh, lots of people are posting their videos, posting their uh, unboxing videos um, and yeah. We got great. more than 120 community videos, I think. Um, if you want to see those things, just head to Mega65.org. You can uh, from there go to the YouTube community videos. You can uh, go to Discord directly. You will find the Twitter account, etc. Everything's basically linked from there. The file host where there are constant new applications. Oh yes, and uh, there are uh, functions on the file host you, uh, where you can uh, also um, add your projects that are in development. So you can already t tell the community, yeah, I'm working on something and uh, sh share progress there. Um, yeah. yeah. Also uh, articles about fixing stuff. Oh yeah, Th which this are is very helpful. So that's files.mega65.org. Um, yeah, and it would be great if you have a problem and you found a solution to your problem, then just post an article on Filehost because it's a much better place to find and link something than to search it in an uh, endless uh, Discord channel. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that's the great community we already have. We enjoy that a lot. And uh, also thank you for... Uh, sending those nice emails to trends because they are really really busy with the stuff and again they are basically earning nothing from it um, probably the opposite uh, yeah. so some of you sent emails to trends um, thanking them that they delivered such a great machine in that troubled times and yeah please also continue doing that because they really deserve it and uh, yeah, all our partners were great. Uh, also, thank you to GMK for the great keyboards. They get a lot of attention. Oh, yes. And uh, to Hinsteiner for making the cases, which were also community financed. And uh, at, at a portion of the, the normal costs, I think. I, I, we had another offer. Uh, for making the cases which were 10 times higher. Wow. <laughs> so I think uh, we also did a great job there, getting a good price. And uh, yes, it's, it, it's a great community effort. Thank you for that. And uh, the second batch is coming. There are some components that uh, still need to be delivered, but they are uh, scheduled and uh, then the next batch will start to ship. Yeah, we also enhanced our uh, in contact with Xilinx, now AMD. They yeah. now have us on the radar. And and they support. even have a Mega 65 on their uh, booth in, uh, I think it's Barcelona, think it, yes, uh, yes, some yes. Uh, electronics so, uh, um, fair. fair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can see the Mega 65 at the Xilinx AMD booth. And uh, so, yeah, things are turning out well. And uh, the future is 8-bit and it's definitely open source. 